Hi guys, this is Mike from mcprogramming.org. Uh, today I want to get into what overriding methods is, and this is a perfect video right after inheritance because it's related to inheritance, and also get in kind of what dynamic binding means. So first off, I'm going to make a very small um, two classes to give you an example. So I'm going to say parent class and then we're going to give a class we're just going to name it child that extends parent class and in the last tutorial I showed you how to write out extends you know whatever it's extending in Eclipse there's a shortcut right here where you can put the super class in and in this case we can say parent and it'll write it out for you so let's go back to the parent class. Let's give it a, a string name equals dad. And let's give it a public string get name method. I'll just return the name variable or dad. Okay. And we're also going to give it a two string. Public string to string, and this will also return name. All right, that class is done. Now let's go to the child class. We're going to say string name equals, uh, let's just say son, and we're going to only give this one a public to string, public string to string. Turn name. As you notice, both of these classes have the variable name, but we've given them different values. So keep that in mind. And also that this has a get name, the parent class has a get name, where child class can call get name, but it doesn't necessarily have its own get name method. So what we're going to do in here is instantiate both classes. So let's make a main method, public static void main string args. Okay. So let's create a parent. P equals new parent. It does not have any parameters. Oops. Ah. Let's put a semicolon there. Close that out. Now let's do a sys out. Um and we're going to do another sys out. We're going to say p dot get name. Okay. Now let's see what happens when we run this. Okay, so we got dad twice. So what this does is it's calling the parent class, and it's printing out the two string when you when I put in just a p, and then p dot get name. So both, both of these are returning that same name, pointing to that. So let's now see what happens when we create a child. Let's say C equals new child. And we will copy and paste this. While I'm typing this, think in your head, is this going to print sun on both lines? So this time, I'll put this out of here just to get it out of there. Just kind of combine like things. Okay, so now we created the child class that extends the parent class. So it should have all the methods and all the variables. So right now, right here, you're going to print out a two-string of the child method. So it should print out name, which is son. Now, when you say child.getName, it is in the parent class, or the, the super class, to child. So is it going to print out son, or is it going to print out dad? Let's see what happens. They printed out dad. And this section right here is called dynamic binding. And this is done at compile time where it had to keep
keep going up in the hierarchy to find this method and then when it did find this method the particular name was already assigned dad so it, it was of the parent type so we could override this method by either rewriting it out or we can do this right click go to source and go to override implement methods I'm going to go to the parent class and get name and this is an annotation that says add override and this is to inform your compiler and I guess also you know the naked eye that this is a method that is overwritten and this to-do list just lets you know that maybe you need to manipulate this a little bit. I'll get rid of that. And right now it's going to return super, which is the parent class, dot get name. Let's see if this changes. No. So what we're going to need to do is come in here and say return name. And now you get the method for this, for the son. And so what's happening here is when you call any level, uh, I mean, I guess theory, theoretically, the hierarchy can go, you know, infinitely deep, which would be a nuisance to write, but typically you'll have a couple levels of hierarchy from very general to, to get more specific and in this case you went from parent to the child class and the child inherits everything from the parent class so if the child class calls a method and it doesn't have it specified in its own in its own child class it's going to go up one level in the hierarchy and it'll keep going up until it finds that method and if that method is specific to something in that class it's going to call that name that's what dynamic binding is. So you can override any of the methods or any of the variables that are extended from a super class of the class you're using. And in this case, that's what we did when we wrote this override method. So thanks for watching and please subscribe. Uh, the next video I think will be on interface. I said that last time, but I wanted to get into this overriding so you knew how to deal with that. So thank you all very much, and like I said, please subscribe and please give me a thumbs up. Thank you.